Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Doom Patrol. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, picking up with everyone's respective situations, you have Jane um, walking in on Kay talking to the therapist. Uh, because it turns out, like, Kay wants a shoe... Uh, and it's like, oh, I'll get you some, but it's like, no, she was like, I want to go to the surface, which is like, whoa, like, she, that's, that's the whole purpose of, like, that underground is so that she never would have to, and it's like, I mean, I guess, did that never cross anyone's mind that she would, I guess it's like, as long as we're still around, that means we serve a purpose, meaning, like, she doesn't need to, because the ecosystem has always worked that way, and so... I don't know. I, I guess like I guess it never crossing one's mind to think she'd ever be well enough to want to. And Jane saying like her wanting to go to the surface is actually a good thing. She wants to kind of get out there, experience new things in life. But the therapist is like, da, 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 slow your roll. But Jane's kind of like, fuck off. Like, what is your well, like what's your like issue with all of this? But for her, it's like whatever decisions have to be made, even about K, have to be made together because we are all in this together. We all, it wasn't just you, we all ate a piece of it. So that thing is a piece of all of us. It's a part of all of us. This all affects all of us. We're a part of this, and there's a delicate balance to this ecosystem of what is it. And I guess it's like if K is just up and free, willy nilly, like able to just go to the. I think maybe the rest of them are kind of worried about, like, yeah, if she's out and about, what does that mean for us? Like, our entire existence is based around her, but, like, if she gets well enough that she can just go to... Because Jane's like, this is her body. It's like, yeah, but, like, what about us? Like, if Kay decides to keep going to the surface, then, like, will we... Maybe they're afraid of ceasing to exist because that means, like, she'll be fine and, you know, it's like, right, she'll go up all the time and it's like, right, we're supposed to kind of have our, you know... Because it's like, who? what gives Jane the right to really kind of dictate things? Like, yeah, you're the primary, but I think they're trying to say, like, you're not the primary primary anymore just because, like, we've all eaten a piece of that thing. So we're just as – it's it's all of us. You know, before you served a specific role in this, Jane, and now that role has shifted. Things have changed. You've changed. Kay's changed. Everything in the underground is different. It's not the same. So I think a lot of that uh, is kind of at play here. Uh, we have uh, Cliff – Getting his medication, granted, is going to take about two or three months for him to notice a difference. But for him, it's like he can't wait that long. It's like he wants to, you know, um, I love the whole like uh, uh, LMAO, for, uh, FAO for him. And it's like, do you know what that is like loving my, oh, God, what, my offspring or something like that. It was something of that nature. I'm butchering it. But it's like, yeah, completely got that wrong. But, um. He dumps a whole bunch of the pills, and he's like, yeah, if I take a whole bunch, I'm going to get better that much faster. You're like, I also love that Vic stops him from clicking. He's like, whoa, internet rule number one, don't click on, like, random pop-ups. I'm curious, like, what that means. Like, is that going to be a situation where, like, it's going to have a negative effect on him because of, like, I was about to say because he's a robot, but I'm like, is it because of his brain situation? Like, what's that going to turn into? Is it just going to, like, combine with the pill situation, is that going to be, like, a spiraling thing where... He's taken a lot of steps forward to become a better person, but maybe a lot of his bad habits will kind of, you know, that ends up being a conversation about Jane. Um, I believe it was about Jane. Yeah, it was about Jane. So I'm like, I'm wondering if that kind of applies in um, Cliff's case of like maybe some bad habits. Like maybe he'll get so caught up in the ads and just kind of get sucked in and maybe it's gambling or something like, I don't know what that, it seemed like that was set up for to be like a gambling like, oh, like a gambling pop-ups and that's going to send him spiraling a little bit plus him on a whole bunch of pills that seems like that's where that might be going but i don't know uh we do have cyborg he's back online and he's you know talking to his dad about like you know he never meant to like put like Vic on a path that was supposed to be like oh like a path that was already paid for you you were meant to make your own life you know it's like i guess he's like it's almost an inevitable thing for like you know us to own and like i guess the, what he's referencing it's like it was almost inevitable that he'd end up like his own father and it's like it's kind of saying the same thing for Vic, but Vic was like but he was talking uh silence was like but hey now like you know I'm, your old man's not too bad um but it seems like they're bridging the gap a little bit more about like you know why he made him cyborg and just like at the end of the day like what you know when, whenever you want to talk that's fine but also what you want to do going forward because for him it's like no like giving up like crime fighting and stuff like that he's like i don't but that is the big question like is that what you actually want 
you know, and I think for him, it's like he's been on this path for so long that's been set forth for him that it's like the lines are blurred of like, what do I want? And just what is like, because even look, he looks at the mirror and it's like, I think it's he's happy to be back online. Like, yeah, I'm about to be cyborg again. But it's like at the end of the day, it's like, is that what you want? Do you want to go back to just being Vic Stone or do you want to continue being cyborg? Where do you where does Vic Stone end and where does cyborg begin? And does the Vic Stone even exist anymore? Or are you 100 percent cyborg? That's a, a big question. Obviously, Larry's dealing with the whole thing. Last time, it was like, oh, it's kind of a tumor, but now it's gone. It's like, okay. But then it turns out it's actually moving around because it starts moving around in his head. And um, I love that, like, later on, he's, like, checking it. And Jane's looking at him and was like, what the hell are you doing? He just kind of, like, adjusts himself and make it seem like, you know. And so I love that uh, Jane goes like, okay, Doctor Who. I'm like, okay, you wrote that line. They sh the show people wrote that line on purpose. Because if you are unaware, where Michelle Gomez, who plays Laura DeMille, uh, was on Doctor Who for, wasn't it three seasons? Three series, I want to say. I want to say it was eight, nine, and ten that she was in. Maybe it was just nine and ten, but I'm pretty sure it was eight as well. So, yeah, she played uh, Missy. She was one of the... Um, uh, she was one of the masters, like, regenerations, uh, you know, so th that was pretty dope, I was like, okay, that's, that's fascinating that they included a lot, I mean, I guess with the literal time machine, it was like, it's kind of a little on the nose, that I'm so stupid that I didn't even correlate that, like, it's not until she brought up the Doctor Who reference, I was like, oh yeah, like, you did show up in, like, an actual machine that is a time machine, you know, so I was like, okay, okay, you know, because the Tardises can look like whatever they want to if you're unaware about that, or regardless and all that. Basically, um, I also love that, like, Jane and, like, Cliff, like, had their moments. Like, yeah, they butt heads a little bit sometimes, but also it's, like, when she lets her guard down and, like, she acts a little, like, childlike or whatever in this regard. And, like, her and, like, Cliff hitting it off me, like, <laughs> and they, like, bump fists and stuff like that. It's, like, and then it's, like, they thought it was, like, flagellation or something like, flatulations, and it's just, like, and then, like, I think, uh, Jane made, like, a farty noise, at first I was like, is that actually Jane, or is that K in control, but it seems like, no, it was Jane, but, like, and just, like, Rita and the others looking at them, like, immature children, it's like, yeah, I expected a clip, but Jane's acting like that, too, like, there's moments like that when they're on the same wavelength, and I love that, but obviously they find out that Laura wants them to go after the da the, uh, the sisterhood of Dada, and it's like, well, I want you to, no, I want you to take them out, I just want you, I I don't want you to, like, to capture them. I want you to kill them. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't kill people unless it's Nazis or giant butts. And then that that's what uh, Cliff and uh, Jane, like, dapped on, you know. Um, but it's, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. It's like, you're not active assassin slash killer. I think I talked about this in my trailer discussion. But it's like, you're not active killers. It's not like you haven't killed people before. But once again, it's like, well, the people you actively ended up killing, like he said, were Nazis and butts. So... I, you know, that's, that's where that kind of goes, but, um, it's like, I don't even know what a Dada is, and I wonder, is that true, because, like, Rita's like, yeah, it's like, she was like, oh, yeah, it's just a French term for, basically, to give them an excuse to make crude, um, nudie films, and be able to call it art, and I love that Cliff was like, oh, but he was basically like, is that, like, uh, when the, you, you do something, and the universe kind of brings it back on you, and she, and Jane was like, that's karma, dick slut. He's like, oh, oh, okay, cool, cool. You know, so they're meant to go out and find out because Darren uh, Jones was looking into the Dada sister, which we do know he's still out alive and well. Like, I mean, we saw him kind of run away at the end of like the post or well, the mid credit scene last episode. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, looking at his ra mad ravings and stuff like that, it's like, all right, we got to go after the, like initially none of them want to do it. And then it's like, Jane was kind of like, right, because she made her raise her hand, and it's like, right, if we do this, will you go away forever? She's like, yeah, sure, and everyone's like, all right, cool, perfect. that's all you had to say, and everyone's like, down for the mission now, and so she asked Rita for help, um, because she ends up showing Rita the video, which Rita's just like, yes, yes, I knew it, I knew it wasn't crazy when I saw myself back then, it's like, I am Rita Farrow, well-renowned time traveler, but then you have Laura DeMille kind of sinking into a spiral, because she's like, 
her stu- her elephant stomach is going like it's not she doesn't have that feeling of like pointing her in the right direction anymore and she feels like it's dead and so she's like drowning her sorrows which right it's like yeah i get it like sometimes you have to get like three martinis in you sometimes you have to get more just kind of to figure things out and she's just lamenting because it's like yeah it's one thing like she could survive with like not knowing her own history not knowing if she's ever lo- uh, loved or been loved but then like she can't explain the parts of herself where like yeah she can feel this instance of like a me- like immeasurable joy but then like the next beat feel this impenetrable hatred like there's just there's certain aspects of just like not knowing like what direction to go and for Rita she's like I understand that she's like you know uh, being this time traveler, that the de- what destiny's kind of set for us, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to kind of take upon those mantles that have kind of be pushed on us. But you kind of just drink. She's waiting until destiny, you know, comes a knocking and uh, brings her forefront into who she believes herself to be. Um, this show has always been about identity, like kind of like who you are and stuff like that. And this episode really kind of lament, like dives into that deeply as. Um, Cliff is high out of his, like, gourd, and, um, they end up in a fog, like, as they're looking for the sisterhood, so everyone ends up splitting up, it's like, come on, motherfuckers, as Cliff runs away, Vic's after him, Jane's following, but tells Larry to say, he's like, I'm not completely useless without the spirit, and she's like, "Uh uh-huh, and it's like, uh, yeah, just stay here with your, uh, net, uh, net zit or something like that he was like hey it's just like he's just relocated to like uh being uh it's kind of like yeah i'm kind of useless without the uh negative spirit aren't i like at least that's kind of how i feel all he has is this moving zit bulge that is now on the back of his neck and i think it's so fascinating while rita's kind of dealing with her own like identity crisis and that's kind of like laura's uh part of that whole conversation as well uh you have uh jane Vic and uh, Cliff all being confronted by some fascinating questions. Well, first and foremost, you have Jane meeting, uh, was it Sherry? Uh, The Fog. Um, And basically, she's not the only one there. She's there with Kay. Because she's like, actually, like the moment you came into the Fog, you've actually been inside my head. And because of that, I can separate you from the rest of the underground, which is so interesting because it's always like, yeah, you can finally like, and that's what she's playing into with Jane of like, you can have your own voice for the first time. Like your voice doesn't have to get drowned out by other voices. You don't have to hear other voices other than your own. You get to be your own person because it's like, at the end of the day, Jane, who are you? You know, and she doesn't really have an answer because when you've been a, and you know, maybe that's also where like, because I think the others have always been content with who and what they are right this is our purpose and yada 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 but jane's always been the one kind of like but uh, like she's always felt like even because she's an outsider amongst them like she's not like a part of like especially the way things have been changing in the underground she's not a part of that as much anymore and so like her and Kay are outsiders but Kay's kind of still being drawn back in as the core of it but they don't know what they do with jane because she's like she's an enigma to an extent because it's like, we don't know, like, what you really are. Like, yeah, like, I can deal with the child's desires, but you, you're kind of a whole other issue. Because, like, the fog was like, yeah, like, don't, like, you think it's strong kind of, like, denying yourself your desires, you know? Um, and the way she was touching her, I was like, is that a, that is part of Jane's story, isn't it? Like, that, especially at the time she's from and stuff like that, that was an issue? I, I, I don't know whether it's just kind of like because she's not i mean to our knowledge she's never really been in a relationship um so maybe that's kind of implying like hey like you can kind of just be your own person love who you love without having to worry about anyone else but yourself so you know the question of who gets asked to jane um cyborg is why are you and he's talking to that guy which i recognize that actor i've seen him in stuff um but like Cyborg, because he was like, oh, you're half man, half tin man. He's like, what about you? Why are you? No, because he was like, what about you? Like, he's like, do you really have any room to judge me? Like, what are you? Like, part man, half man, half bicycle? He was like, I'm three-fifths man. But at least like he was saying like from his perspective, I know why I am. But he's saying like my reasons are my why I am is irrelevant because I'm asking you the question because why are you? Because he's like, yeah, I'm fighting for justice and stuff like that. He's like, yeah, but you're like reciting some cliche thing that someone else is speaking through you, your voice. And for him, it's like, you know, I've laughed my father's laugh and, you know, I've kind of like 
I've been through the struggle and he's trying to say like Vic has it. Vic's like, well, you think I don't, I haven't had struggles. And he was just kind of like, no, because I guess you could make the argument and maybe this is kind of playing into it a little bit is that Vic has the benefit of like, has he had not had his own issues? Cause it's like, right. Like when, when you walk up down the street, like people aren't worried about you because all they see first and foremost is, Oh, they see cyborg. They don't see the black man that you are. So it's kind of like, almost kind of like, Oh, am I like not black enough? It's just kind of like, and he made a, a statement of almost like, yeah, you should be thankful for me that you are like, he made some remark like that. Like I'm the reason why you're free or something like that. And it's like, Oh, using the words of the oppressors, you know, it's like, Oh, like, you know, um, someone more powerful, ho like holding it over you, lo lording it over your head. It's just like, God, it's just like an oppressor would kind of speak from that. But, but it's like, yeah, why are you, um, because, like, he's kind of, you know, that's the biggest, like, everyone's being confronted with the biggest thing of, like, you know, um, Jane with who, um, uh, Cyborg with why, and Cliff with what are you? And I love the whole thing of, like, he'd be like, holy shit, I'm speaking Japanese! Uh, but he's like, yeah, I am a robot, you know? Roboto, and it's just like... Yeah, but I'm also, I got a human brain, and he's just like, yeah, but now, like, he's like, I, before, I never really, like, I was built to be, let, exist forever, but then it's like, yeah, I can't even do that right, because I'm dying. He's like, yeah, and I've been dead twice, undead, too, and it's like, for the first time, he's actually scared, because it's like, right, like, spending so long, like, rushing toward death, wanting to die, and now that it's happening, because now he has something to live for. Before, he didn't have anything to live for when he was rushing towards death, but now that I want to live, you know, and that's what he kind of gets out of the byproduct of it is wanting to live because he's talking to this like because at first I was like are they all the fog but I think they're all individuals in the sisterhood all under the guise of the fog like they're all like parts of like in her mind because she had talked about it a little bit about like basically she was the ant farm's dragon you know she's like I don't even know why I built this like candy store or whatever like she's like I built it so long ago like it's kind of lost on me like why I made it but basically she was sent in into towns and villages by, like, the Ant Farm slash the Bureau to, like, bring things to an end. And just, like, she needed one space that would just be her own that she could block everything out. Just kind of like Jane needs her own spot. Which I'm wondering, like, will that lead to, like, like her creating something like that for herself 100% in the underground? Or, like, branching away from, like, how that's all going to play out. Especially because... Is it just Kay acting like a child, kind of like throwing a tantrum, or is there something more? Um, because she's just like, yeah, there's a lot of things that she wants. And like, maybe there's a parallel being drawn between Jane and Kay of just kind of like, right, like maybe that's why Jane's kind of been acting a little bit like her, like, kind of, like I said, a little kiddish, like just like uh, Cliff has been. Like, he's very childish in his own right, but maybe Jane was kind of acting like that a little bit too because like k is rubbing off of her like the whole desires thing because it's like right k knows exactly who she is and what she wants but jane's the one that's kind of like lost in limbo trying to figure it out um like i said cliff is like in a position where it's like no i'm going to figure out i i i'm going to live no matter what because i've got too much i got i'm going to watch I'm going to be there with my family. I'm going to watch my grandson grow up and be there for him. So, because the lady in the glass was talking about, um, when the last, when the thoughts have all been thought, when every, uh, painting has been painted, I'll disappear. Cause I guess she represents, um, maybe like some form of creativity or just a, a, a she represents being that like eventually all being of no matter thought of like something abstract, something concrete, everything eventually fades. Like maybe that's what she was referencing. Uh, but like Cliff ended up cracking her, um, thing. Uh, but ultimately they all found out, wait, Laura DeMille sent you? And it's like, okay, like send her a message for us because the ice cream lady woke up and kicked Cliff through it. But when they did, like the lady in the glass disappeared. So is she separate from all of this? Was she kept, kept in that glass because she wanted to kind of be away from everything? Like what her circumstances is, like maybe it was a little clearer. I just, maybe I'm just an idiot and just didn't quite understand it, but... Yeah, um, obviously, like, Hammerhead and the others show up to come and get Kay, but even, like, Jane's like, oh, let's go, but Kay doesn't want to, 
and obviously the fog is like, don't worry, like I'll see you soon enough, you know, and they all wake up on the bus. Uh, Cause Larry ended up running into his son Paul, and uh, Paul tried to pull the trigger on him, but then like some, I was like, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like I don't know if it was like a scorpion or like I don't remember what it was. Came calling out his gun, and he's speaking kind of gibberish. Basically, he's working with the Bureau of Normalcy, and it's like right, they sent him here. So the moment they get back, Rita's like, oh, so what'd you find out? They're like nothing. Fuck them. We're done with that. And it's like, well, what about, no, fuck Lord DeMille, fuck the sisterhood of Dada, we're done with that. You know, because Rita, you know, um, repair, was helping um, Laura repair the time machine, and it's like, right, like, I just gotta wait for Destiny to call. Like, Rita's the only one that's kind of upbeat about everything, and like, you know, Laura's kind of like downtrodden, and now everyone else is too, because it's like, yeah, we're not going there again. So like I said, you had the um, therapist, um, and Hammerhead, and uh, someone else, like, Barring Jane from getting near K. Uh, you had Cliff downing more pills. It's like, yeah, Grandpa's getting better. And then, like, clicking on that ad, whatever that turns out to be. And then you have. You have. Vic looking back on everything, like, that happened. And he finds a mask amongst his jacket that says, Approximate Man. You know, because it's just like, you know. Why are you, you know, it's just kind of like, why we, just like, he doesn't know the answers to it, and it just pisses him off that much more. It's like, it's not easy confronting stuff that's like, super deep and traumatic that you don't really want to, you know, because, especially with all the stuff that his mom brought up um, a couple episodes back about everything in the afterlife of just kind of like, what, learning, like, it kind of got resolved a little bit with his dad, but it's still like there's a lot of questions and that I don't think his dad can necessarily give him the answers. It has to be stuff that he has to figure out on his own. So there's that. Uh, it's so interesting because Rita's like, oh, I'm Rita Farr, the world-renowned time traveler. And it's like, you know, Laura's like, I know you. I've known you for 48 hours and that's not who you are because that's not who you really are. Because I was like, because just like everyone else, like Rita Farr, it was a creation, you know, her way of kind of dealing with things. Fake it till you make it type of situation. So there's a lot of that. And it's like, you know, this war we're now time driver is like, that's not who you are. So Rita goes like, you know what? If no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it myself. So, you know, and it's like, Laura's not going to do it. So I'm going to do it. So we see her getting in a time machine. So... We'll see how that works out. And obviously, Larry is taking care of Paul. He's like, nothing's going to get in the way. And we see the thing on the back of his neck. Because uh, I forgot to bring it up last episode. I did comment on it. But uh, I was like, yeah, I don't think that's a tumor. Like, obviously, him throwing up and everything. He thinks of that. But it's like, no, it's morning sickness. Because he's pregnant. Now, I had thrown this out there last episode. I, I put it in the comments. But I'll verbalize it here in this. But it is like, you know, is it going to be... Uh, essentially the negative spirits baby is this how they pro like is this how they like procreate their species or is this the like you know is this like the negative spirit going to be born in like a physical form will this child be born into a physical form like is that why the negative spirit left because this new one will be like a replacement it's like right uh like is it kind of going to be a cycle of like the negative spirits when they grow up and get older they'll eventually have an offspring inside of larry and keep going and going and going and going forever maybe i don't know or maybe like this is supposed to be a fresh start for both Larry and the spirit of like giving him something like I mean I think it's compensated for the fact is that Larry himself couldn't be there for his children so maybe this is supposed to be kind of like a second chance at that in many regards because Paul's here and he's taking care of Paul well he's also got this negative spirit baby thing going on so a lot of really interesting fascinating things uh like I said got our little peek into the sisterhood uh Obviously, we even had Jane at the end eating that piece of candy. So, like, what the fog did say, they were all affected by what, you know, it's just kind of like Mr. Nobody all over again. He was able to get inside of their head and kind of divide them. But, because um, the whole point was, like, to pretend like you're joining the sisterhood, at, you know, just like, um, 
infiltration type of thing, but that completely and utterly backfired, and that might have screwed the Doom Patrol to some extent, might have uh, done more harm to good, but who knows, maybe in the long run, going down this path is actually for the greater good, because they will grow and change from this experience, so it will help them in the long run, but it's probably going to be a bumpy road along the way, but uh, it's definitely going to be really interesting to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.